These are the Sure Super 35 Nightwalker lenses. The short film you're about to watch was shot entirely using these lenses over the period of three days on a trip that we just took up north. So stay tuned for more on these lenses and something special coming up in just a bit. Sleep is for the weak. Those were the words spray painted onto the wall of my first year design studio. Those words were a reminder that no matter how hard I tried, it was never enough. When I think about those words now, I look back with regret. Regret that I took those words too seriously. Regret that I didn't slow down and enjoy the moment more often. I like to think that things are different now, that I'm making up for lost time. But sometimes it's easy to fall back into old habits. I need to remind myself that it's okay to step away. It's okay to take a break. Because sometimes taking things slow and simply enjoying the moment is just what you need to recharge your creativity. Are these the best budget lenses for video shooters? The Sure Nightwalker lenses are pretty cool. But I have to be honest, when I got them, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna shoot because these are crop sensor super 35 lenses and I mainly shoot full frame photography. So I'm gonna get one of my friends who shoots on the FX30 to weigh in with his thoughts in just a bit. But before we get to that, I'm gonna talk about coming up with ideas for your videos. When I was planning, I knew that I wanted to show these lenses in a mix of different scenarios. I wanted to show them during the day, at golden hour, and at night because they are T1.2 lenses. The visuals were pretty clear, but I didn't know what the film was gonna feel like. So there were two things that ultimately inspired the video. The first was a conversation that we had on the way up to where we were shooting. I was with my friend Rich and Stefano, and we kind of talked about how being a solo content creator, there's this constant pressure to always be shooting or always be editing or always be planning your next video. And sometimes that means you sacrifice time spent with friends and family. It's something that I've been struggling with lately and I'm trying to find that balance, but it's something that I knew I wanted to capture in this short film. And then the second thing was kind of reverse engineering the feeling for the video. So rather than starting with a preconceived notion of what it should be, actually getting inspiration from another source. I knew there was gonna be a voiceover and I knew I wanted it to start off mellow and then you hit this like introspective moment where the mood of the video changes and then it kind of builds and picks up to like this epic moment. And Artlist, which I used to find the music, actually has built-in genres for road trips and you can filter by like cinematic and also by epic, which <laughs> worked out perfectly for the theme of what I wanted to shoot. Artlist also has an effects library, which I use to add in ambient waves and forest noises to really emphasize the different settings that were inside the video. But let's say you do all that. You go out, you get all of your shots, and then you come back 
then you realize that you've missed one key critical shot, or you left your drone at home, or <laughs> if you're like me, you crashed your drone into a tree. Artlist still has you covered. And that's because they just added AI search. So instead of just searching for a clip when you don't know what you want, you can actually search for feelings or emotions or an idea. And then the AI will give you recommendations on what fits that mood or that feeling that you're going for. So thanks to Artlist for making this video possible. And if you want to check them out, you can actually get two months off of an annual subscription using the link down in the description below. Let's jump back to the roof and check in with my friend Kofi to see how he's using these Suray Nightwalker cinema lenses. So the Nightwalker kit comes with a 24, a 35, and a 50. How do you decide between which one you're shooting on? Okay, so when picking between the focal lengths you want to use for a particular scene, uh, you want to keep in mind what kind of shot you're trying to get. So for me, establishing shots, generally I'll get it on wider angle focal lengths. You might get something called distortion, which is going to be a little bit of bowing on the corners of your image, but that kind of leans into wider shots. And if you want to get something that's going to be a little bit on the tighter side, you want to get more portrait shots, or you want something called compression, which actually brings the background closer to your foreground, then you might want to look at something like a 55 or even a 35 is a happy medium but it all depends on what shot you're trying to get for me if i'm gonna pick a wide established shot 24. if i need something a bit more compressed 55. like when you first started you were shooting on the 24 so we got that wide city setting in the background now we're shooting on the 55 so we're compressing we're bringing the background and greg everything together so we have that all in one frame exactly So some thoughts about these Suray Cine lenses. So these lenses are relatively inexpensive. Part of the reason for that is because they are Super 35 or lenses that are designed for a crop sensor. So if you have a, an R7, an R10, an R50, something that's a, a smaller sensor, then these are actually a great option. Something you're gonna wanna consider though is the fact that these are all manual lenses. There's no autofocus, there's no image stabilization. The only controls you have are the two rings. You have this lower ring, which is the aperture or the T-stop ring. And then you have this upper ring, which is the focus distance. Now, one thing I do like about these lenses is that the, the rings are really smooth. The, the anamorphic lens that Suray makes has a really stiff, like the ring is really stiff. Versus when I was using the follow focus with these, I noticed that the, the, the action on it was really smooth. But then the disadvantage of course, is that you could accidentally bump it if you're just kind of holding your camera freehand like what I'm doing right now. The front filter is 67 millimeters. So I've got multiple rings on there to get my ND on. And of all three lenses, the one that I've been shooting on the most is actually the 35. Now keep in mind, if you're on a crop sensor camera, 35 is gonna mo look more like 50 millimeters. 50 millimeters will look more like 85 millimeters. Personally, I found uh, on the R5, which I was shooting on, when I put it into crop mode, the 55 is a little bit too tight for the way that I like to shoot. Image quality wise, I, I don't think there's anything bad to say. I, I have noticed that there's more chromatic aberration than what I'm used to seeing in my RF lenses. But keep in mind, RF lenses are all like 3,000 bucks and these, these guys are basically like a tenth of the cost. They're only a couple hundred dollars each. And of course, all of the lenses are the exact same size. So if you're rigging it out and you wanna change the lens quickly, you take it off, put the new one on, and all of your focus gears will line up exactly where you need them to. One gripe I have is you can see just how close this one ring is to the body. Now, personally, I'm not someone who's going to gear up the aperture of the T-stop ring, but if you were, it's there, there's not a lot of space to work with. So you might wanna look at how you have your rig set up before you go ahead and pick up these lenses. But otherwise, they've been fun to shoot on. Of course, shooting in manual is gonna be a lot more challenging than shooting in a run and gun scenario where all of your lenses have autofocus. So the advantage of these Suray lenses is that one, they're budget friendly, but because they're budget friendly, it means there's no way to autofocus these. Everything with them is completely manual. Kofi does more video than I do. So my question to you would be, 
just like how do you deal with manually focusing a, a lens like a cinema lens? With manual focus, you have a couple of tools. You can use focus peaking, which is a pretty common one, but mostly it's just practicing with them. I find that every time I get like a new set of lenses, I have to kind of practice a bit with the focus ring, how smooth or how stiff it might be. Even myself having these lenses, because they're new and I haven't used them as long as some other lenses, like I still have to shoot a lot with it in order to get used to like if my subject moves farther or closer yeah. away or I move farther or closer away. And like which way is farther away? You're like, okay, yeah. that way is closer, that way is farther. And yeah. after practicing with it for a while, you start to like burn that into your brain. Practice is the easiest one. Use focus peaking. It's probably going to be the simplest way to make sure you are in focus. On Canon, if you're shooting on Canon, because <laughs> you're, you're no, a not. <laughs> Sony guy, I'll throw up on the menu right now where you can turn focus peaking on. It's just the way where it highlights the contrast and you can visually see it on your screen, or in my case, if I was shooting with like a, a ninja, I think you were shooting yeah. on one of the Atomos. Ninja as well. Ninja as well. You can turn that on or turn that off, which which makes manually focusing just so much easier. Bigger monitors help mm -hmm. out a lot more because if you're looking at a small screen like the back of your camera, when you try you're to like find- looking down like this. Well, like when you think the focus peaking line is there, like you might just be just out of focus yeah. because the screen's so small. So using like a five inch or a seven inch monitor, you don't have to use like an Atomos Ninja, but like any, like the bigger, the better. And one ting, one, <laughs> one ting, one ting. You've been in Toronto for too long. This guy says ting now. One thing that you were actually doing when we were shooting on the roof this morning is you had it just slightly open. So instead of being stopped all the way down to 1.2, you were like, ah, I'm backed out to T2 or, or T4, just to give you that like wider depth yeah. of field, so that when you are focusing manually, you have less chance of missing it. Yeah. For you guys that are probably used to photography lenses and autofocus lenses, you don't necessarily have to worry about how thin the plane of focus is at like 1.8 or 1.4. Yeah. However, if you're shooting manually, like that plane is so thin that you might get like the one eye in focus, but by the time it gets to the other eye, it's completely yeah, which also means if I make a minor movement, say like this way, you actually might throw off the focus entirely because the plane is so thin. Especially, like if you're shooting straight on, it's easy, but if you're shooting at an oblique angle or you have something and, and like the subject is facing sideways and you're like, oh crap, like I focused on the ear and not like the eye, that's in those cases like jumping down to like T2 or T4 will really save you. Now, when Suray sent me these lenses for testing, I didn't know what they were gonna retail at. I honestly thought they'd be like a $400 or $500 lens. Each lens would be $500, just given the build quality and the fact that these are a 1.2 aperture, which means that these lenses really are a great value. The only real disadvantage is that they are crop sensor lenses. So if you're someone who is shooting on an FX30, on a Canon R7, or on like a Fuji X-T4, then these are gonna work perfect for you. And to be honest, if you're just getting into video, you're probably gonna be shooting on a crop sensor camera anyways. I really enjoyed shooting that fun little video project and have enjoyed my time shooting with them. So if you wanna know more, all the details will be linked down in the description below for you to check out. And until the next one, go shoot videos. <laughs>